Hey everyone, Vasavi here. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about um, selling yourself short, okay? So I was at a workshop, like a business planning workshop, and one of the questions that was asked was like, how much money do you wanna make? Okay, and so if this is you, just like think about it. No, no need to like judge yourself, just think about where you're at. And someone said, you know, well, I'm okay with this amount of money, X, fill in the blank, right? And the presenter was like, well, like, why, why not more, right? And so, why not? Why not more, right? Or if you're in a relationship and you're just, you're not getting your needs met, you've expressed it a million times, but you're not getting your needs met, it's like, why are you in that relationship? Or if you're in a, in a job that you don't like, why are you staying at that job? So here's the thing. Um, no one is going to come knocking on your door and say, here's an amazing life. Here's a, he's a great paycheck. Here is your, your dream guy or your dream girl, your dream work environment, your dream career, your dream house, your dream vacation, anything. No one is going to come knocking on your door. And, and it really boils down to your mindset. Here's the thing. There are a lot, there's a lot of information out there about do this and then make a million dollars or do that and make a million dollars or, you know, just send this one text and you're going to attract the guy of your dreams. And all of that is bullshit. And I'll tell you why it's bullshit because here's the thing. And I keep saying, here's the thing because there's always another thing. But if you don't start to believe yourself, that you deserve to make more, that you don't, that, that you deserve to have more freedom in your life, financially, emotionally, mentally, whatever have you, right? Whatever type of freedom that you want. If you don't believe that you deserve to have long lasting love, that's, that's, that's amazing and passionate and, and you feel heard and you feel understood. And you know, it's just, it's just, you know, you're in this relationship with someone who gets you, whatever. If you don't believe that you, um, deserve to be in a career where you feel fulfilled and you're like, well, this is just the way it is. This is just the way it's always been. Well, guess what? That's just the way it's going to be. And so I say it's what you believe because your beliefs run every aspect of your life. Now I'm all for vision boards. Great. I'm all for writing your affirmations, saying your affirmations, writing in your gratitude journal, do whatever makes you feel good. But unless you start to change your beliefs, challenge your beliefs, change your beliefs, and then take action on those beliefs, nothing's ever going to change, right? Nothing's magically ever going to change. And so if you're listening to this and you're like, wait, Pavasavi, you don't know my life. You don't know what I've been through. You don't get it. I grew up like this and I had to go through this and I've struggled so much with this. Listen, honey, don't even. All right, because I'm someone that grew up in an all white town. I was the only Indian. Like my family was like one of two Indian people. My mom wore a dot on her head for, you know, and w would like come to school functions and I'd get made fun of. I was made fun of for being Indian. I was bullied for being Indian. I got beaten up for being different. Okay. And I, uh, no boys ever liked me. They called me ugly because I was brown and I was somewhat hairy. And um, I was, uh, I started going to a therapist when I was 12 years old. I got diagnosed with bipolar disorder when I was 20 years old and was told that I was going to be on medication for the rest of my life. I got married. I got divorced. I got into a very toxic relationship. I had to go to rehab because I got hooked on cocaine and alcohol and Xanax. Thought I was free and clear. Thought that, the, okay, fine. I learned my lesson. God had to go back into rehab because I relapsed got this job on TV, got let go six months later because my anxiety took the best of me, right? So don't tell me about struggle. Don't tell me about, you, you don't understand how scared I am, okay? Because I understand, but I, I completely understand, okay? That's the thing. And I've been there in my own shape and form of anxiety and struggle and depression. I understand, like I get it. However, I can say firsthand, it is not a reason to not go after what you want. It is not a reason for you to make excuses why you can't have what you want. It is not a validation or a justification or a rationalization for why you are where you are. It, 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 it may very well be um, 
when I say the reason, like our past, if it goes unaddressed and we just push things under the, you know, sweep it under the rug and stuff it and stuff it and stuff it. Yeah. Like where you're at right now, your current situation and you not being happy with where you are is because you haven't addressed all the stuff that's shaped you, but it's how you shape and how you look at, um, and I don't mean to be pointing at you, but this is me just being like, but it's, it's, it's about how you make meaning out of the things that have happened to you. So Victor Frankl wrote the book, Man's Search for Meaning. And those who survive are the ones that have made meaning out of things in their lives that are painful, right? So let's take mental illness, for example. Um, when I got diagnosed when I was 20, that's 17 years ago, I was like, oh my God, I'm crazy. I'm like slightly crazy. Okay, definitely. You don't know what goes on in my head. Trust me. But I've made peace with it because I'm grateful that I have this mind where I am wired very differently and I process things very quickly, right? So I'm not one of those people that has to like sit and ponder and like, why did this happen? Like, I think very quickly and I come up with solutions very quickly and I implement them very quickly because once you have a solution, do something with it, right? Don't just sit on your solution or don't just sit on your awareness. Like sitting on your awareness, like having awareness doesn't mean anything if you do not impl implement it in the form of new behavior and taking action um, that's aligned with that new belief system um, that you've just kind of discovered. So, you know, I understand, I do, I, I relate and I, and, I, and I empathize. I empathize, but I'll tell you this, when it came to me in my life, I've always questioned, I'm like chronically dissatisfied. Okay. It's a blessing and a curse. And I was just saying this to someone today. I said, I am very chronically dissatisfied. And here's why that this is a blessing and a curse. It's a curse because I'm never satisfied. I always want to know what else is there. How can I be better? Is there more? And it's a blessing because I am willing to do, and I'm eager to learn, but I'm willing to do whatever it takes to reach my highest potential. You will never find me stagnant, even in my shit. Even when I was at the lowest of the low in my life, I was still always planning and plotting and thinking and processing of ways and, and trying to make meaning out of why am I here right now? So like, even if you're in a very rough place in your life right now, and you really feel like, boss, I can't do anything. I get it. When I was in my addiction, I tried so hard to get out of it and I couldn't. I could not because it's an addiction. It is an addiction, right? It was a psychological dependence on a substance to make me feel better. Um, even in my addiction, I remember taking action and doing whatever I could to kind of open up my mind and open up my eyes and learn more. And it was still very hard for me, but I, I did manage to get out of it because I asked for help and I went to rehab and I allowed people to help me. So wherever you're at in your life right now, if you feel like you absolutely are so stuck that you cannot do anything, if there's one thing that you can do, it is to sit and ask yourself, why is this happening? Not, why me? Why is this happening to me? No, you're not, you're not a victim. All right. You got to ask yourself, unless you actually are a victim of a cruel, hateful, sexual crime. I, I, I do not advocate looking at yourself as a victim when it's something that you have control over. Okay. And so I have no control over the fact that I was diagnosed with a mental illness, but I do have control over how I look at it right? So that is the one thing that we all have control over is how we look at the situations in our life. So wherever you're at, the one thing I want you to take away from this video is to sit down, ask yourself, why is this happening to me right now? Like, what do I need to learn? There is something for me to learn here. What is it? Give yourself the permission to try to understand what's happening. It might take a while, but I promise you that if you at least take the time to understand yourself and why things are happening in your life, You'll feel better. You'll feel like, you know what? Okay, there's some stuff I got to sort out and I need to take the time to do that. Um, there's so much more involved with this, but, but this is really kind of my one action and takeaway that I, I, I want you guys to walk away with from this video. If you have any other questions, just comment, uh, DM me, and just know that I am here for you and I get it and I, and I do understand. So have a great day.